All right, so Miami is 6-1. and one. Their defense has been amazing this season, but their offense was really clicking against Dallas. And we're going to look at that through the lens of Kyle Lowry's assists. This is already the Lowry special in Miami. Full court passes. What's crazy is that Lowry's scoring hasn't even been that huge this season so far, as we get this really nice bounce pass to Dwayne Dedman. Although Lowry did score a lot in this game, but his impact has still been huge because of the playmaking, the defense, and all that. This one here, nice little flip pass to Tyler Hero, who continues to light the world on fire. And for this Lowry assist, we've got P.J. Tucker cutting baseline. They haven't just had P.J. Tucker stand in the corner. He's been actually part of the offense a little bit. And now we get to see what I feel like is the signature thing with this Heat team already, which is Lowry, Bam, alley-oops. No one was in the paint for Dallas there. And if one isn't enough, then you might as well do it again. Dwight Powell was in the area that time. Now let's take a look at this starting point again. There are so many options right here between what they end up doing, which is Lowry comes up and then Bam dives. But, I mean, you can, you know, Duncan Robinson can go with a handoff here. Jimmy can cut to the rim. I don't know who's in the corner, but they can cut as well. Because the defense has to respect Bam from out here or else he'll, he'll take you off the dribble, uh, the, the options are just limitless. For this specific play, this is what ends up happening. Now, I told you their offense was great against Dallas. Big reason for it was Jimmy having 17 free throw attempts. Jimmy has been a force at scoring at the rim so far this season. He's shooting like 73% in the restricted area, and we saw that one in the half court, but this one was off another Kyle Lowry full court pass uh, as Jimmy gets fouled by Dorian Finney-Smith. And this is one thing with Lowry. He has sped up Miami a bit. Last year, Miami was 29th in pace. This year, they're 15th. I don't think it's a coincidence that some of that is they know if you run, Lowry's going to look for you. We'll look at one more Jimmy foul. This one's from Lowry. Jimmy acts like he's going to set a screen, keeps on going, and Lowry's going to throw it up there. If we can get Jimmy and Bam being lob threats when, whenever Lowry's got it, it just makes their offense even scarier. So yeah, Miami's looking good. Now if we can go on to... Uh, Cade Cunningham's second game. He once again had a very rough night from outside. Uh, how much basketball has Cade had a chance to really play, though? You know, that's that's the question that I've got. Because I'm pretty sure he didn't play in the preseason at all, right? So to just get thrown into the fire like this, it's certainly tough. I think there were some things we could still take away. For one, he's willing to move off ball and get into the post rather than just stand there at the perimeter all day, even if the shot didn't go in. This whole sequence is good for him. He gets by Pat Connaughton with just a little in-and-out dribble. Gets that floater over Giannis. And as far as his assists, I mean, this is a really nice-looking behind-the-back bounce pass. I certainly can't do that. And we get another moment of his passing genes here. It's a really good pass to the corner off the top of the key. And this one's really nice, too. Isaiah Stewart sets the screen, and Cade was ready for the trap. And, and through that in kind of the perfect spot that allowed Isaiah Stewart to just keep going all the way to the rim. So, Cade, he is showing little signs of the things we're excited about. To me, he's just barely played basketball for a while, so it's probably just going to be a minute, but uh, I'm not concerned with the shooting. Maybe I am like 1%. We talked about the number one pick. Let's talk about the number two. Jalen Green just had one of his best games. I think the Celtics game was still his best one, but he was making some big threes against the Lakers. Defended by Avery Bradley here. And just a pull up over Westbrook. This right here is exactly why he was picked number two. They were talking about his handle and just how good he is at finishing inside and just sliding through defenders and all this. Beats Austin Reeves just like that. AD's digging in LeBron at the rim. None of it matters. And then you get his two threes late, which made the game a little too scary for the Lakers. It seemed like it wasn't going to be a problem for him. That one, and then this one was nuts. Over AD, the step back and all that. The Lakers still came out with the win, but for a moment it was like, wait a minute. Now we get a LeBron dunk, this time with no McDonald's advertisement in the background. You know, man, LeBron... It's crazy. Sometimes you forget that he's still this athletic for like a couple minutes just because he does such a good job of just managing his stamina and stuff now to where it's sometimes he like barely drives for a little bit. And then out of nowhere, he's just like, oh yeah, I still look like I'm 29 years old sometimes. 
Mavericks offense outside of Luka is painful to watch. No creation outside of Luka and Brunson. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the thing too is like, it's not that easy for Dallas to make a deal because they just don't have that many assets. I mean, their one real tradable player is most likely Tim Hardaway Jr., but they need him. And as far as tradable picks, I mean, they're still feeling it from the Przingis trade. I think they actually can move picks now, but it's not until like, it starts in like 2026. So it's it's just kind of rough, man. They're kind of stuck until they can get off of Przingis' money or something. In other words, they desperately need Goran Dragic. Tyler Hero now has the most points ever by a sixth man in the opening seven games of a season. What, even more than John Havlicek? And if you didn't know, yes, John Havlicek spent a decent amount of his of his career as a sixth man. You can Google this. And what stat does Zach Lowe have? Nuggets are plus 80 with Jokic on the floor, minus 62 without him. My goodness. Okay, so I'm on NBA.com. Really, it's these top two lineups. The rest of these have barely played enough for me to really take anything from them. But these are your two consistent no Jokic lineups. And the only thing I notice is that there's no Monte Morris in either one. So that's an obvious adjustment. You could also try Morris with Will Barton. Maybe MPJ as well. That's another thing. No Aaron Gordon in either one of these as well. Definitely a lot of potential for staggering. I mean, you look at this lineup here. Maybe this is the one that they should go to more. This one's only played in one game. Ben Simmons has not accepted any off-court help, and there's no timetable for his return. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got no clue, man. If you force me to pick, I do think he's going to come back at some point, as opposed to him just being gone forever, apparently. But at the same time, I predict anything at this point, I feel like. And Scotty Pippen, he couldn't have been more condescending. Uh, MJ on The Last Dance. Did I ever give my real take on The Last Dance? Overall, to be honest, I didn't think it was that awesome. I felt like it was a lot of rehashing things that we already knew. Uh, to me, the best stuff was like the practice footage and behind the scenes stuff and a couple of MJ interviews, but just recapping him making a shot against the Cavs or the battles against the Pistons. Like, yeah, bro, I knew all that when I was 11. I didn't really need to see all that. And two weeks into the season, how are we all feeling about our teams? A Celtics fan posted this. Uh, well, as a fellow Celtics fan, might I tell you, I think their season is on the brink of collapsing. They're three games under 500. They've got a tough stretch coming up. When I say collapsing, I don't mean like they're going to be the worst team in the league, but it's like they're going to be fighting for the play in all season. Maybe they get in, but then they lose in round one. You know, it's like not a whole lot to get excited about. And then after that, we got two more years on Jalen's contract, so that's fun. 